Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void! And today it's gonna be a Patreon cast for those of you who support me on patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for at least one dollar a month. If you're seeing this in December, thank you very much for supporting me on that site. And if you're seeing this in January, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button here on YouTube for five times a week StarCraft 2 content. Bottom left hand corner, we have the blue Zerg player. It is Dongrei Goo. And at the top right, we have the Red Terran player innovation. Now, if you've been watching some of my ZBTs recently on the channel, you know that Terran is doing pretty well against Zerg. That is for certain. Somebody made the observation in the comments the other day. Whoa, two drones coming out. Are you going to drone scout? Or is this a three hatch before pool play? Mm, where are you going, friend? Oh my gosh, he's drone scouting Inno. That is some respect, man. Or just checking for proxies with a drone. Well, I guess that's scouting too. So yeah, just respecting innovation, making sure this isn't a proxy play. So someone made the observation on my channel fairly recently that it seems like Terran can get away with having like 20 or 30 fewer workers than Zerg because of mules, right? And that means they have a much higher army value when they're both maxed out. And maybe that's the reason why Terran is having a good time with their TBZs recently. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure that is the case because I don't think there was a balance change that would make that the case recently. Anyway, we've got a Reaper here. Reaper expand here from Innovation. 16, 18, 17 here for Dong Rei Gu. Lost a little bit of mining time for that drone. And this Reaper's name is General Warfield. Legendary General Horace Warfield had been waiting in purgatory for his chance for many years, believing that someday he would be made into a co-op commander and be offered a continuity-free second chance at life, just like his former Emperor Mengsk. After years spent preparing his Gorgon battle cruisers and an enhanced nuclear arsenal for action, he was met with the announcement that no further co-op commanders would be made. Infuriated, he stole a Reaper suit and flew back to the world of the living, intent on causing some terrible, terrible damage in retribution. Holy smoke, General Warfield mad? You don't want that happening, do you? Alright, so shows up to try to kill some links, try to kill some drones if possible. And almost gets one. Forces one to be turned into an extractor. Nice reaction time for Dong Regu, actually two, to be extractor. So that's, a bit of, that's some lost resources there, exactly 12. And a tiny bit of lost mining time. But now Queen's out, third base coming up at about 2.30. Nothing too crazy there in a very standard macro style game here indeed. Demand Center on the way from Innovation. Sub three minute third man. Is there any way for Zerg to punish this? I'm going to go with, if they take a third base, no, there's not. But if they stay on two bases... Go for a quick lair, go for a Nidus, and go for a Roach Queen. They can actually punish this. The problem is, the Terran's going to scout it out, right? He's going to see there's not a third base. He's going to try to get a Reaper inside the main to see the lair timing. And then say, okay, we got to be on the lookout for a Nidus. And then kill it before it pops, and then that's the end of that attempt. So, Zerg players, I don't think, have a very reliable way of dealing with this at all. It's actually a really, really solid play that Terran players have been working on more and more often. I saw Morrow do it first. Just incredibly greedy third base timings, and the Zergs are like, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what we do about this, and I can't blame them. Again, there's no way to reliably do this unless you go for the two and a half base, right? Two and a half base Roach Ravager timing that has killed a lot of Terran players unless they just kind of blind go Banshees. Like, if they happen to have two Banshees out, they're fine, but if they don't have two Banshees out, they're toast. Oh, gosh, this Reaper... Woo, General Warfield, alive at four minutes. That's that's our guy. He's a great character in the StarCraft II campaign, for sure. Do miss him quite a bit. Creep tumors, doing creep tumory things. Let's see, one, one, one player. Actually, I thought that was a starport. No, no starport. There's got to be an armory coming up here. Are we doing some Hellbat timings? Let's take a look. Hellions <laughs> escorting General Warfield around. Queens very obviously scouting what's going on with these overlord positions, recognizing where the Hellions are so they can respond to them and trying to get some creep tumors up before the Hellions burn them down because the creep tumors are light now, and that is a problem uh, because Hellions do bonus damage to light. Zerg hate that change. Creep spread a little bit harder to pull off here. It's honestly not a starport at all. I guess if you go for that quick third CC, you don't really have a lot of room for other stuff in here. Got double NG base, so he's definitely committing to bio. I don't see him going for anything else at this point in time. And that, oh, General Warfield 
You dead. I think you might have killed a Zergling, or maybe it was a Hellion that pulled that off. Do a quick count here of anyone is... No? Cool. So, Reaper General Warfield got a Ling kill before he died. He's got to rest in peace after that. So, there's your starport at five minutes. But, man, that means your spores really don't have to be any time soon for Dongregu. Yeah, third base lands at five minutes, which is pretty darn fast for a Terran. Fourth base immediately planted down in reaction to that. The Overlord can see this, right? Yep, Overlord can see that's happening. And therefore, the fourth base comes down in reaction to it. Baneling Nest on the way. Lair coming in. 1-1 one, one for the Lings and the Banelings and the Ultralisks. And I do like this Ling Bane strategy we're seeing here out of Dongregu. Is it going to be Mutalisks? Is it going to be Hydras? Is it going to be Corruptors with those Lings and Banes? We don't know yet. We do not know yet. But that is a lot of Marines out for innovation. This has got to be drops. I really don't see what else he'd be working on here with this many Marines out. Unless it is going to be drop play. And he obviously is making medevacs. So Aspire would be a good answer here for Dongregu. Hydralisks do okay at denying drops as well. And killing medevacs. Especially as they're trying to retreat from the battlefield. But Mutas and Corruptors just make sure that medevacs... The drops are so, so difficult to pull off. That said, this is innovation we're talking about here. Uh, innovation is an insanely, insanely good player. Combat Shield coming in here from Inno. Double medevac drop here at about six and a half minutes. With Combat Shield. And probably with plus one attack... Based on the timing here, yeah, armor's a little bit later. Oh, Ling sees this. Dong Regu, you boss, just absolutely scouting out. Ow, 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 get out of there, medevac. Do not die. Almost full of Marines. That is a very, very, very terrible way to go, is to die with a belly full of Marines there, medevac pilot. So there's your Spire. No Hydralisk Den. Baneling Speed is on the way here, too. And it's Dong Regu can get up to having Banelings with speed before the first main attack comes. That's an amazing advantage for Dongregu. Usually this first hold is incredibly difficult because you don't have Baneling speed yet and all you have are Lings and maybe some Roaches and some Queens. Look at this creep spread though. He's got this creep spread all the way up. He's in spitting distance of that third base for innovation. Good heavens to Betsy. What a fantastic play this is so far. Out of Dongregu. Zerglings. I thought about jumping on those guys, but it's not really not really worth it at all. Yeah, so difficult hooks. 15 seconds away from completion. That's so, so good. It looks like technically this engagement might be... No, you know what? 3, 2, 1, done. All right. Hellbats are here. Marines are here. We did get an armory eventually. Widowmine's in production because, of course, there are. Uh, Widowmine, good unit. But here we... Oh, flanking for both sides. That's a retreat. That is a retreat. Oh, and a medevac does go down to the queen attacks. I think, I'm assuming that was the previously very injured one, and it was. Yeah, that's why engaging with a very, very injured medevac is not a great idea against Zergon creep. So Mute is on the way. Fifth base coming up for Dongregu in the bottom right-hand corner, spreading creep out to meet it. And building his own fourth base now as innovation, trying to stay ahead. Or trying to stay even with the Zerg player and income is always a decently good idea. So Marines and Widow Mines, man. That is the play. Ling run by into the third base. And there are some Lings and Widow Mines coming in here to try to deal. They do. Oh, these Lings. Okay, that was just well played by Innovation. Recognizing where those Lings are going to retreat to. Getting a bunch of free kills there. Two SCBs down for like 20 Zerglings. Not great. Also, Creep Queens. Trying to get out of here, trying to run for their lives. Creep Tumor's getting killed by the Marines here. Two green legs. Splits! Pretty good, but that means the Lings can get surrounds on you. But no, Dongregu does not like what he sees. Mutas being used in defense are not something that they are super interested in doing. They want to be out harassing. They want to be killing medevacs that are trying to flee. They don't want to be engaging with Marines and Widow Mines. Defensive Mutalisks are just... They're not good. Ow! God, that widow mine, though. Getting some hits. I mean, it's a problem. Part of me thinks that widow mines are overpowered. Part of me thinks that without widow mines, I don't know what Terran does against this, really. <laughs> you can split all you want, but without widow mines, I take a chunk out of the number of bailings and lings that are here. Maybe Terran just never win another game. So perhaps, you know, perhaps nerfing the widow mine a little bit, doing a little bit less damage. Maybe the splash radius reduced a tiny bit. But again, that would require StarCraft to be interested in patching StarCraft 2 in a balanced way ever again. They've said they will as needed, but whatever that means. 
Oh, okay, a bit of a supply block there and innovation. You can't enjoy that very much at all. And I think, I don't know, it's a little bit early yet to predict who's going to win this thing. Uh, it feels like a Dongrego win, just based on the tiny, tiny amount of damage that Innovations maybe they'll pull off here. I mean, it's 5,000 resources worth of damage, but you know how many drones have died today? The answer is zero. Zero drones killed in the first 10 minutes is not great for Inno. And he just he was able to get up to that super greedy third base as a result. Oh, forces a cancel on an attempt at building a fifth base there. That was kind of hot. Thor production obviously happening. And Innovation down on this right side. Oh, the what are these bailings doing? Ah, the bailings are actually heading up. Um, oh my gosh, the wall is down. Oh, good reaction though. God, that's a fantastic reaction. So six SCVs go down, but guess who's here in the bottom right-hand base? That base is toast. Fare thee well, hatchery. Bam. And I don't know if this group is getting out of here. Oh, what? Oh, what? Two widow mine hits on those, on those mutalisks though. They get a medevac, but reinforcements come in. That was massive for innovation. He only loses six SCVs to a big bailing attack. At his 30, kills an entire hatchery. He gets two big widow mine hits on these mutalisks, forcing them to pull back when they don't want to. But whoa, Dong Regu committing and he's gonna lose a lot of mutalisks here. That's for sure. Thor forced to pick up and get out of there. 180 to 175 supply. 86 to 80 total workers at the moment. Our Thor guy has zero kills. How about this guy? Four kills, much better. He is a battle-tested Thor for sure. Innovation knows you really just can't sit back and allow the Zerg player to do whatever they want because they will kill you if you do that. I don't care how good you are at Terran. If you sit back and just ask the Zerg player to do whatever they want for 20 minutes, you're gonna die. So he's got to stay engaged, but this creep spread is a bit of a problem for the Terran player. Top left base being taken by Inno Ultralisk Cavern on the way for the Zerg. And the Marauder, you know, Marauder counts good. Obviously, Innovation's been preparing for these Ultras for some time. He knows that's where we're going from Ling Bane Yuta. Probably not going to be Lurker without a Hydralisk Den. Innovation double expanding like the boss that he is. This group's all going to die. He's really not saving anything over here, but this is the bigger deal. This is the group that's pushing in, clearing creep, killing overlords, trying to supply block the Zerg. Actually, that medevac survives because the Mutas need to come down here and save this hatch by all means necessary. Lings, pains. He's got to engage. They're in range of your hatcher. You can't just allow it to go down. Mutas trying to magic box this Thor, but there's a bunch of Mutalisks or er, Marines remaining. Just kidding, they're all dead now, all these meta. This is why you make mutas. The meta pack count dropping just precipitously there, as per usual. 13 medevacs have gone down. There are six on the field at the moment. Sure, Ling's doing stuff, but not a whole lot when there's a planetary fortress in the house. All right, where's our Ultralisk cavern? Ultralisks coming in. Kindness pleading on the way. Actually queuing up anabolic synthesis. You don't see upgrades queued up a lot by professional players, but that's exactly what we got there today. Top left hand base. Oh, there's nothing. Okay, this base is dead. There's nothing in the general area to save any of these SCVs or this command center at all. These SCVs actually get a free pass out of there because the mutas are really focusing on that command center. But guess who's in the bottom right? Innovations down here. That hatch is dead too. So second hatch kill in the same location of the game here for innovation. Ba -ba 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 -pow. Sucker, you going down. Some mutas getting in here in innovations. Uh, fourth base, I forget which one this is. There are reinforcements around to handle that. And same thing down to the south. After getting the first base, it's hard to get a second one uh, because there's just so much defense coming up. Defender's advantage really kicks in here quite effectively, but you know what? Innovation survives the onslaught of Lings and Banes. The Ultras are here, but they don't have speed yet. That's a dead extractor. Ultra shows up. Is there enough Marauder here to take that guy down? It seems there very well could be. Uh, these are 3-3 three, three Marauders after all. He's forced to come in and deal with these guys. Doing the splash damage is better than nothing. And Innovation has another attack coming down the left side. Suddenly, it goes up 30 total supply on his enemy. Our army value is substantially higher, too. Resources lost here. 24,000 for DRG and 19,000 for Inno. So he's just he's playing the game, man. Dude, that is a nothing Thor. 
Is it? Okay. Muta finishes off the Thor. <laughs> One Mutal has killed that Thor. That's not something you see every day, I don't think. Okay, so Medivac's dying on this right side. Not going well for Anil, but the left side much stronger. Much, much more capable of wiping out this entire hatchery. Widow Mines. No, I don't think they got any hits off there. That Thor getting magic. Oh, more Widow Mines at the back, though. Getting one kill. Transfusing the Ultras before sending them back into battle. Just standing in here is Inno. He feels like he has this, but uh, not convinced the moment that he does. He falls back a bit and then comes back in on the follow-up. Ghost Academy on the way from Innovation. He is setting up for a longer game here for sure. Marauders trying to just get hits off. I guess trying to kill that queen more than anything. Don Regu is consistently down 30 supply. This is a nice little ling run by though. Gonna kill a bunch of SCVs, but again, does this just help Innovation? Does losing SCVs not matter? Oh, the Widow Mines getting killed by Banelings that they explode, but still. Innovation forced to flee on back and so, what the what was that what that is a huge swing in overall Supply I guess 16 SCVs went down. That's your swing in overall supply dude Dongri Gu, He is one of those players That can be down on one side of the map, but then his counterattacks are deadly These ultra okay one ultra is already gone down the other one's gonna die here too to these marauders But suddenly the third base possibly cannot be saved what Dongri Goo? What dark magic is this? How did you do that? He does counterattacks with a handful of really injured mutalisks, injured ultras, lings that aren't super healthy either. Completely wipes out the third base. Five more SCVs. Innovation down to a hundred supply. Army value is up thirty in favor of Dongri Goo. It's almost, and that's your good game. What? <laughs> what is even happening? Ha, okay, I okay. We've seen Don Regu do this before. To I think it might have been innovation actually at a previous GSL. So we look at this situation, right? Bam, right here. It is innovations up 30 supply on Don Regu, 190 to 169. Army value is up 25, right? And you're like, oh man, this hatchery. If this hatchery goes down, I don't know that Don Gregu can win this game. He's already lost the bottom right one several times. And then he gets this little. Okay, this is part of it. He gets into the mineral line here, kills a bunch of SCVs, and then he just. Then he's retreating. And then Don Gregu just makes, okay, he makes 30 lings. Okay. So that's it. He makes 30 lings. He wins this engagement because it's largely Marines. Then some Marauders show up to the party a little bit late because they're a little bit slower. They're kiting as hard as they can, obviously. But these Ultras are taking a while to take get down because they do have the upgrades, including Kitness Plating. This third base dies. Innovation just loses so much stuff. Yeah. So he goes from being like 5,000, 6,000 resources lost up on Dong Regu to being now he's lost more than the Zerg player has. His army right now is six Marauders and six Marines. That is it. Versus 20 Mutalisks? Yeah, that's not happening. Fair enough. Innovation read the room and tapped right out. What an absolutely incredible reversal there by Dong Regu. That's what we're talking about here is the Dong Regu. He's just, he's that kind of a Zerg player. He can make it look like he's losing and then win 60 seconds later on the other side of the map. Ridiculous. Just the, I would not have crossed the map with those injured ultras and injured mutalisks and a handful of lings. But he somehow made it work anyway. Innovation not quite having his army all cohesive there. It was all Marines and the Marauders are a little bit late. And I think that's what hurt him there the most. But yeah, killing 15 supply depots was pretty awesome. I got to say by Dong Regu. Getting uh, 43 SCV kills and only losing 5 drones is massive as well. 6 Thors died. Didn't see that. 31 Mutas. <laughs> oh boy. He had 23. So he was going pretty Muta heavy there. 4 Ultras died. 1 left on the field after all was said and done.
and losing those two hatches. Whoo-wee. What an absolutely incredible, incredible game. That was a lot of fun. That was a good Patreon game, I think. <sighs> Again, thank you for supporting me if you're a patron of mine. I really appreciate it. But that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.